Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm your host, Duko Ishii. And I'm your co-host, Alisa Onishi. Last week, we attended the fourth annual survey exhibition sponsored by Pacific New Media at the South Street Gallery. It's called Contemporary Photography in Hawaii 2012. It was first class in the art, the photographers, the judges, the crowd that showed up, which was bigger than anyone expected, and for that matter, the cheese and wine. The exhibition is open to all Hawaii artists, amateurs, and professionals who use photographic processes, traditional silver or color prints, digital imaging, alternative processes, and mixed media explorations. The exhibition is meant to offer artists who use photography a venue for exhibiting their work. It's also intended to be a snapshot of the state of the art of photography in Hawaii. First, we had a tour by one of the jurors, longtime photography instructor at UH and on the mainland, David Ulrich. The other juror was Doug Beasley of Michigan, a nationally known photographer with close ties to Hawaii. There were some fabulous stopping your tracks photographs there, both digital and film, color and black and white. Perfect. <laughs> it smells good. This is Contemporary Photography 2012, sponsored by Pacific New Media. It's the fourth annual survey show. Our interest is to do a survey of contemporary photography in the state. So this is a statewide show, although in reality it's Oahu-centric. So uh, give us uh, some of the high points, some of the notables that are here. Well, I think the first thing of interest is that if you look around, there's quite a lot of black and white images, which is different than years before. The black and white images are both digital and uh, traditional silver prints. So what we're seeing in today's world is a kind of marriage of traditional and digital. It no longer becomes important, whether it's digital, whether it's film. It really just becomes photography. This is even an iPhone piece. The other interesting thing, one of the notable aspects of the show, is the strength of the portraits. If you look here at the portraits, there's a number of quite outstanding photographs of people where the photographers have either done character portrayals or images of people in their environment. So as part of the jury, I was really struck with how strong the portraits were. The other aspect of the show that I feel is of note is the high level of what I would call semi-experimental work, which is maybe conceptual, maybe dealing with a theme rather than capturing a moment. This is a man who's photographed the homeless population, but really from the point of view of preserving their dignity and their humanity rather than trying to express anything about their conditions. And just of note, there's a number of Pacific New Media students in the show. This is one of our students, someone that's been around for a while named Allison Best. And she just recently applied to and got accepted in several graduate schools. This wall, by the way, is the award winners. Vendors have come in and given prizes. And this particular wall are the award winners. So uh, that was already decided before. Well, no, we jury the show, and then the vendors come in, and they select their prizes. I see, okay, that's good. So Holly Kalani Corporation is given a prize, Kaimuki Camera's given a prize, Peggy Hopper Gallery, a number of other photographic vendors. It's very nice. Then we had a chance to talk with some of the photographers who had submitted their work to be considered for the exhibit. I'm, I've, I've always been a huge fan of, of, of the arts in general, and particularly photography. Uh, so for obvious reasons, I think if we were able to go forward and have uh, the, the caliber of folks come in and do the judging, have more competitions on an annual basis, it's only going to increase the awareness of not only the local folks, but also folks from all over the Asia Pacific uh, Rim to, uh, to say, you know what, this is kind of a hub. And if that's where we're going, why not? It's an awesome opportunity. How do you feel about the mystery and metaphor in your work? It seems to always be present. It does seem to <laughs> always be present. Shirley took some photographs at a wedding and the last class assignment, and even the wedding photographs felt very metaphoric and mythical. Yes. Isn't that interesting? Yes. That your work just moves in that direction. <laughs> that is an extraordinary print. Oh, thank you. So how, how did you do that? Uh, 
I was walking around uh, Ho'omalohia Park and I looked, for, I looked for designs of nature on the ground and I photographed it. This is a photo that I took when I was hiking in Yosemite and it had been starting to rain as I was going up the trail. I turned around and saw this view and of course when you keep your camera protected when it's in the rain, so it's now, do I want to get my camera out? Do I want to get my everything wet? I did. I took the shot. This was one of three, and this was one of my favorite. Um, this one's a self-portrait. Set up day after work. Just got the idea. And <laughs> rough day at the office. How did you achieve that result, that effect? Um, I just... The sun was setting and um, set up the tripod and took like 30 shots until the focus was right and the look was so right. This is this is you taking a picture of yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of self-portraits. It tells a story for sure. What does it mean to you to have? It means that there's here? a lot of people involved in this show, and that there's a lot of good energy for the artists. I agree with that. And good, good, beautiful. Looks like beautiful so variety are you on of the work. Wall somewhere? Where I'm are not you? here. I'm down at Louis Pohl Gallery. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm well, a painter. So this is the art community down here. Is that what you're it's saying? Crowded. This is more than support. just the photographers. I, this, I'm is, here. this is a scene from the <laughs> Upper East Side. That's what it is. How did you know? I'm from New York. I'm from New York. So this is taken right in front of a glass door. What I like about the photo is you actually see the reflection of inside the room and there's a sliding door to which feels like there's a path beyond. So I titled it The Room Inside, that everyone has so much going on in their lives, you know. We all need this space where we just kind of find ourselves, be quiet with ourselves and find balance in life. So the photo is from a series, a documentary series I'm doing on uh, hula and uh, the life of a halal and uh, it was, it's actually of one of the uh, teachers teaching the younger girls uh, a step in, in hula and um, very late afternoon light actually quite difficult to shoot but uh, was able to get off a shot that uh, I really like because it shows sort of the grace and the beauty of, uh, of hula and uh, she's an amazing dancer herself. Oh I wanted to ask the, the artist here so isn't that a Degas? No, it's not. <laughs> How did you achieve that? Uh, to be honest, I was babysitting, and uh, one of the girls that I was babysitting, um, she kept coming out in costumes, and then every time I brought my camera out, she'd run away from me. And she just did that, and I thought it was interesting. So. And why the two together? What, what, are you, what are you saying by juxtaposing those two? Um, well... Just compositionally, I thought they were kind of similar, and the colors are similar. It all started with uh, taking a class at Pacific New Media, and um, ever since then I've been shooting a lot again, and I really wanted to be in a show just to um, feel like that part of my life was back. I was asked by my good friend to take a um, to be in the delivery room when um, she was giving birth. And she gave me full access to the, the, the whole process of birth, you know. So I, um, I, I was able to get a, this portrait of my friend's son, Rai, wow. a few minutes after he was born. I was actually taking a group of 12 journalists through India um, to look at U.S. Muslim relations. And this was um, the area that this is taken in, in Dharavi is known for its Muslim um, population. And one of the things that they are known to do in India is pottery and leather working. And so we were in this um, area and I took this shot and then um, I really liked this shot because the particulates that you see in the air are actually the ash from the kilns. I work for the East West Center and um, part of my job is to travel with journalists and also to document our trips. Well, you've done that here. Thank you. I've been doing uh, photography for about 10 years and love the courses that Pacific New Media offers. I, just, I like photography. I especially like black and white photography, uh, especially uh, portraits, close-ups, macros. They're very interesting stuff. So I think, fortunately, the judges seem to like black and white photography also. I did not. I'm too old. 
I love town restaurant. Okay, we're gonna sit down for a minute. So stand on. Yeah. Okay. These are all new photographs. The idea is that they've never been exhibited before, and uh, this is a way to share their vision. Uh, unique this year is probably half of them are black and white. I think black and white photography works very well. After a while, David Ulrich made some comments about the photographs that had been submitted and made some awards to the number of photographers there. Welcome to Pacific New Media's Contemporary Photography Survey 2012. This is our fourth annual survey. And I would like to give a hearty congratulation to all of the artists who are here who are in the show. You guys did great. So I also want to thank everyone that entered the show and didn't get in. What's really important about a show like this is that it's a survey. It's really meant to take a look at contemporary photography in Hawaii. And the entire context is what is, what is important. So I congratulate those of you that, that are in the show. And I congratulate you that, have, that took the time to finish your piece, to enter the show. And the jury was difficult. There were a lot of very, very good pieces. I'd like to just make a couple of notes about the jurying process. It's very interesting because the show has always been juried by more than one person. It's been juried by two people. And every year, the best work simply rises to the top. The work that was an immediate yes was here. The work that was an immediate no was here. And we only had to negotiate four or five pieces. So it's actually pretty clear which work has a kind of excellence, which work has a depth of content and a mastery of execution. I hope that we can all learn something from this show because we do intend it as being a survey of contemporary photography in Hawaii. The Pacific New Media Jurors Award goes to a Ms. Allison Best for Water Series Untitled Number 7 and Rafael Malesic. The Frame Arts Hawaii Award goes to Peter Mallet for his piece called Still Point. The Halekalani Corporation Award offered by Peter Shanlin, who's the COO, goes to Tracy Wright Corvo for her piece called Greta. From Hawaii Photo Rental, we have two awards. Mark Berry for the piece called Hibiscus. And Wesley Lum, also for Hawaii Photo Rental, for his piece called Fading. We have a new award. Peggy Hopper from the Peggy Hopper Gallery came in here yesterday and was so moved by the show that she decided to offer a cash donation award that goes to a Mr. Jordan Harrison for his piece called Hands from the first act of cleansing. I like that. Image Works Hawaii award given by Christine Cobine is to Kara Akiyama for the piece titled Boris. Kaimuki Camera Award from Neil and Pat, the owners, goes to Kauru Kohashigawa for his A Mother's Worries. Lighthouse Camera, given by Don Slocum, is given to a Ms. Shirley Lamb for Let There Be Light. I would also like to mention that Shirley Lamb is the recipient of the first sale. Uh, Peter Shanlin, who's the CEO of the Holly Kalani, came in last night to give the award and was so moved by the show that he called me immediately, and he's talking and talking about how wonderful he thought the show was and how he thinks it's the strongest of the four shows that we've produced, and I agree with that. I think that this is a really extraordinary show, and once again, I congratulate all the artists. So thank you, everyone. Enjoy the opening, and we hope to see you again next year. For those of you that are photographers, please enter the show. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, David. All in all, it was a huge crowd and totally filled the gallery. What excitement, what artistic energy. This opening was reminiscent of an art opening in New York or London. Good for Pacific New Media at UH Manoa for putting it on. Good for David Ulrich, Doug Beasley, and Susan Horowitz. Good for the South Street Gallery. Good for the photographers. Good for the winners. Good for all the devotees who showed up. And good for Hawaii.
Now for our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech's 4 to 5 p.m. weekday drive time radio series on KGU 760 AM continues this week covering business, Asia, tech, energy, the arts, and government. Tune in to 760 AM every weekday at 4 p.m. and raise your awareness on ThinkTech Radio. On April 26th, the Hawaii Venture Capital Association and ThinkTech will present a luncheon panel program called Getting Around in Hawaii. The press weighs in on rail. Featuring remarks by Mayor Peter Carlisle and two blue ribbon panels of journalists who have been covering the subject. It's part of our ongoing transportation series. Sign up for these programs on hvca.org. And now here's Bill Spencer, president of the Hawaii Venture Capital Association, with this week's Spensation. Bill, our Press on Rail program on uh, April 26th is really a challenge. You know, we have some great uh, panelists. We have a number of, um, you know, leading lights of the press on the program. And, um, and we did this in order to avoid having a um, you know, big argument about it because the community is so divided. You know, have we, seen, have we seen any issue in the state, or the city anyway, on which people are so divided in the last, well, in, in recorded memory? Oh, not I mean, really. I mean, extraordinary. this week with uh, Senator Inouye's declaration that only World War III would stop rail, as we say in Texas, them's fighting words. That is, and you know, it, it raises the question as to whether the delegation should be so actively involved in this. Isn't this a question, uh, you know, for the city, uh, or possibly the state, but uh, not, the, not the federal delegation, but he's, he's apparently committed, active, using his, um, you know, power and leverage to make this happen, and you, you, you wonder about that. Um, and I think it makes it more complicated, actually. I mean, to me, I think um, the rail issue, the divisive experience we're having, uh, is not so much about rail as it is about governance. Who's really in charge of this thing? And how, and how much the public count? And, and then the government attempted in every which way, including spending millions of dollars for public relations and, and advertising and, and campaigns along those lines, to try to convince the public it was a good idea. But that's not where we are. We are, we are here at a snapshot to try to determine exactly what is happening and what are the considerations going forward. And we need to get these panels to talk about those considerations. Is it the economy that it's all about? A big construction project with transit-oriented development to keep our construction workers uh, employed and fed? Uh, is, it, is it about the money? I mean, can they do it for five and a quarter billion dollars within the budget on time? What's going to result as a as part of the construction process is it going to be disruptive uh, you know that's going to happen all of these things uh, are really pushes to this point of of green light or, or not if it's going to be stopped it's got to be stopped now before any more uh, holes are dug in the ground yeah we well, query uh, you know the uh, contracts have been signed people have been committed there's legal obligations all right the government has entered into many <coughs> contracts worth many, many millions of dollars. It's going. It's going to happen. And the question is, how well informed will we be about it? And what are the real uh, underlying motives? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I mean, we have an election that's going to turn out to be a mandate election here in a few months. Uh, conceivably, the election will go against rail. But will uh, Ben Caetano have the ability to stop rail? The fact is the city is strapped into lots of contracts. Uh, it could be there'll be lots of lawsuits, cost of fortune, could be, I don't know. So the idea about getting the journalists is sort of get fair witnesses on things. We don't want advocates here. We want fair witnesses, and we want them to tell us maybe, uh, you know, what we didn't know, um, try to put it together. If you put them all in a room, it's different, and they all write separately. Yeah, I think that's the thing that's really going to be cool about this. We've got um, some opening remarks by the mayor. And then uh, our first panel is just talking about the cov coverage of rail and how it's being approached. Uh, Steve Petranik of Hawaii Business will moderate. And then we have Jerry Burris, Richard Halloran, Mark Platt, and Barbara Tanabe, all top-notch observers. Uh, it would be interesting to see what they say when they sit together and try to, you know, uh, tell This is an extension of our news morphosis program. How are the news media doing? And in this case, how are the news media doing on one of the most uh, divisive issues we've seen in our lifetimes in Hawaii? 
So, and then the second panel, we'll talk about the story itself, as I mentioned, uh, you know, what is actually happening, answer our questions, uh, you know, uh, uh, put, put the facts together so that we can understand them and have a credible discussion about them. Moderated by David Tomilowitz, also of uh, our sponsor, Hawaii Business Magazine, with panelists Mark Abramson, uh, who is uh, from Pacific Business News, Michael Levine, Sybil Beat, Ian Lind, a famous blogger, Neil Milner, a, gr a great commentator on politics, and Malia Zerman, Hawaii reporter. What a panel. This would be really interesting uh, to see them come together, you know, and share their thoughts together. And then we'll have questions from, from the, uh, the attendees, uh, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. It's a jam-packed program. Uh, just to remind our listeners, it starts... 11.30 on the 20th floor of the Plaza Club, 900 Fort Street Mall in downtown, April 26. Imagine all these people to talk about the most important issue of our time. Well, I'm looking forward, Bill. It'll be good, Jay. Thank you, Bill. And here's our co-working entrepreneurs, Ray Chung Fujihira and Tony Stamford, to keep us current on their latest adventures at the Box Jelly. This week, we've been working on a lot of things. We've been curating new events. We hosted a few new events. We are still working on the branding, working with the community, and even upgrading our systems, everything down to the internet. So uh, one kind of big win that we're, we're closing right now is uh, bringing Luxor out here. Luxor are UX experts, and they're based in uh, LA and New York. And they, do, they just got funded by 500 startups, and we're going to be bringing out here for a two-day workshop uh, June 2nd and June 3rd. That's a big one for us. And I think it really raises the bar on uh, kind of classes that we can have out here and out of the space. When you say workshop, what workshop exactly are we looking to cover in here? Uh, well, it's a UX workshop, so it goes over UX, user experience, and it uses um, lean methodology. Mm -hmm. So it's really kind of getting in there and um, finding out the best ways to interact with uh, your customers through, I guess, web and mobile applications. Very important. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we uh, just got the proposal finished for a, a TEDx Honolulu speaker who is going to be doing a, another workshop. And this one is basically um, uh, ways of learning and ways of building teams. So we're going to be really uh, happy to bring that to you. And uh, we'll give you more details soon. And also, we're going to be doing uh, iOS, a series of iOS classes uh, with Kyle Oba, who is a member of High Capacity. So uh, look out for that as well. Yeah, he, he was one that hosted a few workshops on the breakdown of the Connect mm -hmm. Xbox. So that's the object that makes you into a, a controller. They hack that and work different classes. So his next projects, he always works on fun things. Mm -hmm. So this really goes along with, we were talking about bringing high quality programs. And I think this is our first kind of launch into that. And we're looking forward to doing it. Um, we also have Melissa Rivera is going to be joining us. She was one of our first advocates, and she's going to be on HGTV on a TV show. So we're going to have the TV uh, show launch party. She's a industrial designer. She graduated from RISD. She has like her own uh, practice right now. It's called Unleash Studios, and we're really, really excited to have her uh, come and you know kind of share her her spotlight on the national TV here inside the box jelly. Um, on top of that, we just had Ace and his No Juice team, which is a team comp comprised of uh, both Box Jelly and high capacity members. They just applied for Y Combinator. So this is kind of the things that we want to see are teams that have scalable businesses. And uh, we have another one in the pipeline as well. So we'll let you know about that as we get more, you know, details and solidifies up. Um, oh, we secured our another investor, which is nice. So you know that we're pushing to open up our expansion for our space, and right now we're kind of in the, uh, I guess, the uh, build-up phase. Yes, curating capital is, is what <laughs> comes to mind. Yeah, curate, curating capital, you know, uh, and continue to do that so we can get off and running uh, by July. So we're really, really looking forward to that. Um, we had Organic Clothing launch their clothing line for the summer. Uh, Organic was our first coworker in our space, so we're re always happy to host him. And there was a pretty good turnout. I think uh, the people really, really enjoyed uh, the time there, and his new clothing line looks good. It does. So um, it, it was great. We had our uh, our new kind of uh, designer out there, and we're working on new logo work and new websites. And he went and took some good video and uh, still photos as well. 
So it's kind of uh, integrating that into our new push. It showed really great use of the focus room, how we can actually change it into an event venue and host different things like um, that we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. So to be able to see it transform from a, uh, a training room into a room to release a clothing line, you know, it really shows what we can, with a little bit of work, we can make it anything happen. Remember, Luxor, that's uh, L-U-X-R dot C-O, check it out, June 2nd and June 3rd. Make sure you sign up. Um, we're the Box Jelly. It's a place to work. It's a place to meet. It's a place to build. Work the way you live. Theboxjelly.com. Thank you. Thanks. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Thanks to the Scheidler Family Foundation. It supports a number of educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including Think Tech. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Miko on Maui and Helpo on the Big Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company, and CEO of CBI Polymers, a tech company in Hawaii. Okay, Lisa, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week, can't get enough of it, just like Jay Fidel does. For additional times, check out oc16.tv. You bet, Duke. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a sponsor or a volunteer and help us reach Hawaii. I'm Duke Oishi. Thanks for joining us on ThinkTech. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next weekly episode. Aloha, everyone. I'm Elisa Onishi. See you next time.